I have with me today Mark McKillen, the mover and shaker of the healthcare <laughs> industry. Mark, thank you so much for making time to talk to us today. Thank you. It's great to be here, and I really enjoy my work with CAST. Awesome. Awesome. So, Mark, to start with, tell us a little bit about yourself and your career so far. Well, I'm the director of the Duke Margolis Center for Health Policy. This is a university-wide program at Duke. We have offices in Durham on campus and also in Washington, D.C. The mission for the center is to develop the ideas, conduct the research, and support the implementation of new policy steps to help improve health and health care. And it's really a global mission. A lot of our work focuses on the U.S., but we're working increasingly internationally as well because there's so many opportunities and so much need for making health care work better and more efficiently with rising costs and new biomedical innovation opportunities and also opportunities to improve the health of the public through things that haven't traditionally been done well in healthcare, like dealing with social determinants of health and dealing with other factors, behavioral issues and the like, that influence the health of individuals and populations. Um, I got here from a career that's focused a lot on implementing better public policy and developing ideas for it. I started out in academics as an economist and a physician, uh, practicing medicine and conducting research on the factors that, that made it easier or harder for new treatments to come along and be used effectively and easier and harder for healthcare professionals to work with their patients. And I've tried to keep that focus through my career. It's also involved work in government at agencies like the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, where I was administrator, and at the Food and Drug Administration, where I was the commissioner for a period of time. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> obviously, with, with the administration change, there is a lot of uncertainty in terms of where healthcare in the United States is headed. Yeah. Uh, with that uncertainty, many of the healthcare executives, they are thinking about what kind of decision should they make and what should they base that off. So what's your advice in times of uncertainty to healthcare executives as to how should they make their decisions? Right, well, healthcare is always a time of uncertainty, it <laughs> seems like, That's from true. a policy standpoint, and perhaps no more than now. We are having a continuing, ongoing, deep debate about the best way for the government to support people getting access to health care through health insurance coverage and the ongoing uh, discussions about repealing and replacing the Affordable Care Act, the challenges of making exchanges and in individual insurance markets work well, the uh, need for further modernization and improvements in Medicaid programs. All these are really tough issues that people just have some fundamental differences of opinion on. One reason they're so tough, though, is because healthcare costs are so high. My former agency, CMS, is going to spend over $1 trillion this year. It's a lot of money, and that makes coverage expansions hard. It makes it hard for states to provide adequate access to vulnerable populations through their Medicaid programs. And it brings me to the point where I think there is certainty. So while I can't say exactly how the next round of debates about the Affordable Care Act will play out, I can say with certainty that the opportunities and the policy pressures to find better ways to deliver health care that people need at a lower cost to support innovations including new cures that come along but also innovations in models of care uh, making it more convenient for people to be treated at home those approaches are going to have more support than ever because it is so important to find ways to both innovate in healthcare and do it at a more sustainable cost. Uh, one area where there has been, for example, bipartisan agreement, uh, despite all the fights over the ACA, is in the importance of moving from volume to value in our payment systems in the United States. This is something that has support among private sector leaders, including employers and others who are paying for care. It definitely has support among public sector leaders, so in uh, both red states and blue states, uh, Medicaid program state leaders are implementing new approaches to care. And at CMS, the CMS administrator, Seema Verma, recently reaffirmed her commitment to moving away from fee-for-service payments, 
and to emphasizing some new steps in doing that. So these are also some, some new opportunities for uh, healthcare leaders. In particular, CMS is trying to emphasize ways of getting the information needed for people and their physicians and, and healthcare teams to make informed decisions at a lower cost, so uh, more effective information liquidity and, and lower cost, less burdensome ways of providing the information, the data needed to support new payment models, and also a big emphasis on um, co care for complex populations, specialized populations like those with advanced health needs and many of the patients that CAST members are, are focusing on. Uh, finally, getting patients and their caregivers more involved in care and more involved in these kinds of uh, delivery and payment reforms. You know, a lot of these have taken place so far without patients not only not being involved, but sometimes not even knowing about it. And as you know, uh, especially for, for chronic conditions and um, some of the um, medical issues that people who are in long-term service and support programs and their caregivers have, patient and family involvement is just really key uh, to, to making effective decisions. It's something that I saw as being very important in programs like Money Follows the Person, Independence at Home, and others that I've uh, been involved with in, in the past. And I think you're going to see more opportunities for those uh, kinds of programs to move forward too. So a lot of uncertainty about maybe how some details of coverage policy are going to play out, important details, but some uncertainty there. But on the other hand, more clarity than ever uh, that we need to make more rapid progress towards delivering better care at a lower cost, uh, both in terms of acute medical services and in, in terms of long-term services and support. So <clears throat> you bring up an interesting point that there is bipartisan agreement in terms of moving from fixed fee mm -hmm. um, to more value-based uh, care. And technology plays a big role in that space. Right. So, what do you what do you see as the role of technology in this transition, and what are some key trends that we should look out for? Well, I think the trend to watch is how much progress is happening in these payment models that I absolutely agree with you that do support the use of technologies to coordinate care to make it more efficient to help people stay at home, to avoid complications. Technology is absolutely critical for all of that. And unfortunately, in the old fee-for-service models, that's typically what didn't get paid for. You know, there's no payments for care coordination. There's a financial disincentive often to treating patients at home and a financial lack of financial support for heading off complications before they happen. So technologies like the ones that CAS is supporting support could support a broad range of these transformations but it means moving into the new kinds of payment models and, and that's what I think uh, uh, the CAST leaders should really focus on. So you've been associated with CAST for quite some time so what's, uh, what's your view of the role CAST is playing in this transformation? I think CAST is playing a very important role in a very challenging set of transformations. So much of the work that has happened so far in healthcare transformation has focused more on the acute side of healthcare. So uh, physicians, hospitals, um, uh, healthcare organizations that are dealing with acute problems. That's understandable. That's sure. where a lot of the uh, the Medicare spending is, and a lot of Medicaid spending too, but there's increasing recognition that if we want to get those costs down, we have, to, we have to step back. We have to think about earlier interventions. We have to think about ways of uh, helping people meet their needs where maybe they don't have to spend so much time in, in the hospital or, or the doctor's office. And that's where CAS work has been really important. So on issues like um, new uh, tools that can help long-term service and support providers develop their data systems and electronic medical records and really start thinking more about the, the longitudinal care for a patient, um, not just while they're in the facility, but, but how to head off the complications, how to keep them well, uh, the tools that are available to help people live at home or to be monitored remotely. Uh, efforts like that at CAS, I think, are, are going to play an increasingly important role. But this is hard though. Um, it means not just looking at any one technology, important as it might be, but putting them all together. So uh, more work by CAST on 
uh, use cases that focus on patients, not just technologies, more work by CAST on uh, how uh, organizations uh, are experiencing putting these different technologies together as they get into new models of care and as they form new partnerships uh, uh, that focus on care integration for, for patients. Uh, those kinds of tools I think will be increasingly useful in the future too. No, I think that's, that's a terrific insight. So obviously you, you've been very successful in your career. Um, <clears throat> there are a lot of young healthcare executives that yeah. look up to you and say, <laughs> how do I become like Mark McCoy? <laughs> so what is your advice to them? Yeah, I don't know that there's any one secret. I'm not sure how many of them really want to be like me, but um, I think what's, what is important, what has been important in my career is a couple of things. First of all is focusing on what's important and not necessarily following a traditional career path. Um, in healthcare, we are hopefully going to have a very different industry in 10 or 20 years than we do today. One that's going to be much more focused on people and solving their problems personally, one that takes lessons that we've seen uh, start to be applied in other sectors of our economy, uh, retail, commu communications, uh, travel, transportation. Uh, really hasn't come, you know, all of those IT and uh, big data type supports haven't come to healthcare in the same way. And that's going to mean a very different way of organizing care. So don't be afraid to do something different. The kind of traditional business models and traditional skills going along with those are going to evolve. Um, focusing on things like uh, data and analytics, on building teams, on just looking at the, the, the problems in your area of of uh, practice, your area of work in, in a new way, um, I think can help you prepare for the future. Um, second uh, thing I would emphasize is work as a team. Uh, it's impossible to do anything by yourself um, of consequence generally, but especially in an industry like healthcare where there's so many moving parts and uh, can seem so complex. Uh, there are ways to build team. Uh, in this industry, I think are easy, easier than others because so much of the motivation for people in this industry is not just about making money, but about making a difference in, in people's lives. There's nothing that people care about more than their health and the health of their loved ones. And if you've got a, a, a vision and a mission, even if it's complicated, uh, keeping it tied back to that can really help uh, keep teams together and can really help get work done. Uh, and keep at it, don't be afraid to fail. Uh, I, I went off track a few times uh, uh, in my career and it, the nice thing about healthcare again is there's so much opportunity for change, uh, so many um, um, new developments happening, such a growth industry. It's just a great field to be in. Oh, well, thank you so much for that advice and um, we really appreciate uh, you taking time to share your thoughts with us. Thank you so much. And great talking with you. You should have a, you have a future as an interviewer, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> Thanks so much. Again. Thank you.